Are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television. Featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting and award-winning conservative voice of television, Wally George. What a great crowd. How are you all tonight? Yeah! Are you ready for action tonight? Yeah! Okay. Right. okay. You folks at home, good to see you. This is where it's all happening right here. This is the show that has guts. Hot seat. Well, well I want to welcome back after a... After a uh, a lengthy vacation where he was he was touring uh, the country, finding out what people were thinking about hot seat. Let's welcome my good friend David Kennedy. Here he is. David, welcome back. It's good to see you. Thank you. It feels good to be back. You know, wherever I went, city after city, they've seen you on uh, uh, Phil Donahue, Thick of the Night, and so forth. They can't wait to see Hot Seat. They want to know when it's going to be there. Well, you know, we now... They're, re they're, they're ready for you. They're ready for Hot Seat. Well, of course, we're already in San Francisco, and we're... Uh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. <laughs> wait, they're watching this right now. <laughs> And somebody has some campaign posts. Oh, you get a sign of those sick campaign oh. posts. Well, needless to say, we have some people representing Gary Hart. Patrick Galvin is here, students for Hart. Obviously, these students are illiterate. Likely brainwashed at the same time. <laughs> Gary Hart with his 25 cent Teddy Kennedy impersonation. Let me tell you this. Get out of here. <laughs> and these poor misguided youth really think that Gary Hart has a chance to be the president of the United States. <laughs> nominate Gary Hart as president of the Jane Fonda Fan Club. Well, in, uh, in Boston, they asked me, could you come back there and do your Teddy Kennedy impression? <laughs> yeah, I do it better than he does, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I, I understand that, you know, we are seen in San Francisco on TV20, and I, I heard now, Arnie Evans told me that he got a phone call from s some people in San Francisco, some students in San Francisco, and they're holding uh, Wally George parties uh, every Saturday night. I, now, wait, 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 wait. Now, wait a minute. Arnie, knowing San Francisco, I hope they're the right kind of parties. Uh, oh, well. Okay. Now, our other, our other guest is, uh, oh, this is a wild man, a really wild, his name is Rudy Krause, and he, he's against the police department, can you believe it, he has a booklet out called Stop the Punk Cops, come on, what is this, I can't believe it, here's another chapter, Rookie Bulky Punks, what the heck is that? I, well, well, I mean, this I, I think this man has his foot halfway in the loony farm, but anyway, we'll, we'll get to him. Now, this guy will probably last, I think, David, uh, maybe, if he's lucky, about four minutes on this show. Yeah, I okay. think so. Now, before we get to, uh, to questions from our great audience here tonight...
<laughs> okay. It's time. That, that takes the cake. It's time for our. Hey, there's a sign out there that says Ch Church of Wally. Church of Wally. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's another sign that says Wally for Czar. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Church of Wally. That's Emperor, too far. maybe. Yeah. Okay. Now listen. Uh, uh, before we get to the questions on our guests and all that, it's time for my commentary of the night. <laughs> tell you. The Soviet Union is warning and threatening us again. Now, have you heard? These maniacs are trying to scare us and intimidate us with their macho saber rattling. Now, listen, let me say something. Wait a minute. I know this is going to be this show is monitored by the Communist Party of the United States, and I know this message will get back to Moscow. Let me tell you red punk something right now. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You will never, you will never intimidate us, not as long as Ronald Reagan is President of the United States. Now, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan knows what you jerks really are, and what you really are back there in Russia are a bunch of 98-pound pinko weaklings. <laughs> now, wait a minute. And don't, and don't try to kick sand in our faces, because we'll kick a lot more than sand. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Soviet minister, Soviet defense minister Ustinov has warned us that he has increased the number of submarines along the shores of the United States. He thinks this is going to send shivers of fright down Ronald Reagan's spine. No way. Now, Ustinov goes on to tell us that the Soviet submarines could rain nuclear destruction on the United States within 10 minutes. Don't you threaten us, you jackasses! Don't, don't, don't you dare threaten us. I have news for you, Russian maniac jerks. Our missiles, our missiles in Europe can rain nuclear destruction on you in eight minutes! Just, just back off. All this tough talk will get you nowhere. We are just as tough as you are. Yeah. Now the United, Ronald Reagan and all of us here in the United States certainly do not want a nuclear confrontation, obviously. But we also do not want to be pushed around and threatened. All of this tough, rough talk is to scare the president into removing our missiles and to halt installation of new missiles in Europe. It's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> By stopping the deployment of missiles in Europe, we would be, be made helpless and wide open for a Russian nuclear attack. I say to you Russian punks, save your threats. We're not listening. Take a hike. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Seat. I'm Wally George. David, do you want to make a comment on my opening remarks there? Well, I'm afraid you're getting a little soft on communism, Wally. <laughs> Don't you think you could be more forceful? <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, I want to, want to thank uh, uh, Bill Mann of the San Francisco Chronicle and the Oakland Tribune for his, his column on, on us called, Wally George Knows Why He's Smiling, But Does Everybody Else? And I want to say uh, thanks to Bill up in, the, in San Francisco. No, really, that, there was a good art, article. Uh, I like the way he started out. He said, look out, TV fans. Joe Pine is back, and this time his name is Wally George. <laughs> Hey, 
Well, thank you, Bill. I, I appreciate it. You know, David, what's surprising to me in San Francisco, of all places, is we're getting some very good mail from there. Yeah, I know. So there must be some, uh, some sane people after all in San Francisco. <laughs> Now, before we go to the audience and, and get some questions, on, I see some uh, all kinds of people up there. Uh, oh, all right, all right. Uh, here's a, it's mailbag time, as a matter of fact. Now, here's a, here's a, here's a very brave individual who wants to take me on, and he won't even sign his last name. He's Spike, Spike of Baldwin Hill. I, I mean, he thinks he has a sense of humor. He says, Dear Waldo. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and listen to this brilliant maniac. I wish I could move to Russia because that pitiful person you call your president hasn't done nothing for this country. That guy wasn't even fit to be an actor. Well, you're not even fit to be an American, and I'll give you a one-way ticket back to Russia. <laughs> And, here, and here's an even braver individual. They love to write these nasty letters. And this guy just signs his initials, J.M. of Costa Mesa. He says, Dear Wally, it seems if you don't like the first two words of a letter, you tear it up. Ah, ridiculous. No, no I'll, 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 I'll read the rest of, I'll just hear the rest of this maniac. I think you do that because you don't have the guts to face the facts. He says, I don't care how popular you may be, I would never like to be like you. I would rather collect garbage. Wait a minute. You're the perfect man to do this because this is garbage. I have one final letter here, and I, I think David and Arnie, you're going to get this. You know, I have these, these stupid liberals who write to me and try to paint me out as a racist. Well, let me tell you something. And they say, nobody who is not a white Anglo-Saxon ever watches you. Oh, really? I got a letter from, uh, let's see, um, Grail Thurmond of Inglewood, California, lives on East Beach Avenue, Grail Thurmond. And here's what he says, Dear Wally, I am a black who views your program every Saturday religiously. I'm glad you have the courage to stand up against organizations like the Ku Klux Klan. Even though some criticize your program, I feel you're the best talk show host on television. <laughs> I thank you for that. Let's go to the audience and see what this, whatever he is, has to say. Okay, okay what's your first name? And uh, Wally, my name's Paul Cheney. Yes. Um, you believe in the Bible and Jesus Christ, correct? Yes. Uh, what is your definition of communism? Don't ask me questions. You are supposed to ask me a, a question about, about something happening in Wally, the news. Don't give me a stupid thing. My point thing. is, uh, Jesus Christ, his teachings were more communist than they were capitalist. Oh. I knew. I knew when I saw you out in the line you were a lunatic. <laughs> Probably why you picked me to say this question. How can you, how can you possibly say a thing like that? I uh, try to defend the root that statement. The word of communist is commune. Commune means if you have more than another, you take that and give it to someone less fortunate. And that's what Jesus Christ was teaching. Yes, David, Co you want... Communism, uh, communists are atheists. Do you think Jesus Christ was an atheist? <laughs> no. Yeah. What people believe of Russians who aren't really communists. Well, I want to tell you something. You stand here at this point and take up my valuable time saying that Jesus Christ is like communist. Get off my stand! Hi, Wally. I'm uh, Joel from Long Beach. And I wanted to ask you, what do you, what do you think we should actually do about the, the submarines off the coast? Well, listen. 
They've been there for a long, long time. But I think that we have to be very, very careful that we maintain our military strength, not only to be equal with the Soviet Union, but to maintain military superiority over the Soviet Union. But if we don't, believe me, my friend, the only time we'll ever have a nuclear attack from the Soviet Union is if we get too weak and too far behind Russia. And when that happens, we really are in trouble. We've got to keep our strength up. And as far as those subs go, they don't mean a damn thing. Don't worry about it. Next, come on. <laughs> What I want to tell you is this, by telling us about these subs they have off our coast, all they're trying to do is intimidate us and to scare us, and they're not going to do it. Okay, what's your question? Yes. Uh, Wally, I'm Paul from Brea. Yes. And I'd like to say hi to Peggy. And I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to- Wait a minute, who told you to say hi to Peggy? <laughs> Peggy, by a uh, good friend of mine. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, I'd just like to ask you what you think the solution is about all this hullabaloo they're making about the uh, Carter debate papers being supplied to Reagan before the 1980 election. Oh, listen. Why would Reagan even need those stupid Carter debate papers? What could he learn from debate papers from Jimmy Carter, of all things? <laughs> What they, are, what they are trying to do, obviously, is trying to turn this thing into debate gate, another water gate, if you will, and they're not gonna do it. The liberal news media will do anything to discredit Ronald Reagan, uh, to embarrass him, because they, they're afraid that he's gonna win in a landslide in November, and they're trying to stop that, but they can't, because he is gonna win in a landslide. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Seat. And David, do you want to introduce our first guest here? All right, first up tonight on Hot Seat is Patrick Galvin, who is the leader of the Gary Hart for President group. <laughs> At UC Riverside. Okay. I'll tell, how can you possibly, if you have any brains at all, and you must have, <laughs> how can you possibly be supporting a wimp warmed over George McGovern like Gary Hart for President of the United States? Yeah. Obviously. Wally, are you gonna, Wally, I think Gary Hart is one of the best presiden presidential candidates this country has seen in a long time. He's an experienced man who can occupy the job of president. Let me tell you what he's experienced in. He's in, he experienced in being a left-wing, far left-wing radical like his pal, George McGovern, who ran for the President of the United States in 1972 and was so far to the left, palling up with Castro in Cuba, that the people of this, state, of, of this nation repudiated George McGovern overwhelmingly by re-electing President Richard Nixon, and who engineered that maniac's campaign, that, that uh, I would say yes, Simpo George McGovern. Who was it who engineered McGovern's campaign for the presidency that was so overwhelmingly rejected but your candidate, Gary Hart? If you give me if you give me a chance to talk about Gary's ideas, I think you're no, gonna see no, I think you're gonna see that he's not a warmed over communist. He's not George McGovern. He's does, Gary Hart, a Colorado senator who can be a good president, and that's why I'm backing him. Does, does, does Gary Hart repudiate all that George McGovern stands for and did stand for in 72? Has he ever done that? No, he has no, he not. Hasn't. All right, then he obviously believes in the same thing George McGovern believes in, and the people rejected him overwhelmingly. Wally, what type of reasoning is that? No one, none of the other, none of the other candidates. I'll tell you. None of, none of the other candidates. Wait, but let me, I'll tell you the kind of George reasoning. McGovern. I'll tell you the kind of reasoning that it's is. faulty reasoning. Any, no, it is not. Any man who believed that much in George McGovern and ran his campaign back in 72 has got to carry the same philosophy as that candidate. Now, if He's, I were... Wally, 
Gary yes. Hart is not. <laughs> Gary Hart. Gary Hart. Gary Hart is not George McGovern. And Gary Hart. Is not, I don't think he I has to totally that. repudiate. Gary Hart, wait, I don't think he has to totally repudiate McGovern. McGovern wasn't a bad man, and his ideas were. McGovern. Like that. McGovern. George McGovern was, the, in my opinion, the most dangerous man who ever ran for president of the United States. What do you think? <laughs> Today, Gary Hart. The best thing Gary Hart does, and it isn't even that good, is a poor impression of Teddy Kennedy he's or not, John Kennedy. He's not wait doing any impression. It is of now. It come been, on, Wally. Can you come on? It look, been, wait he's a not doing any Kennedy impression. It's been impression. stated in, in Newsweek and Time Magazine. And Gary Hart is Gary Hart. He's been that way all his life. Let me tell you if he looks like Kennedy, I'm sorry about wait, that. Wait a minute. It has. Wait, it has been reported in Time and Newsweek magazine, and also by Roger Mudd uh, of NBC, that Gary Hart has practiced and studied the mannerisms of John F. Kennedy to try to bring another Kennedy, either a John or Teddy, even by saying, let me tell you this. Well, I'll tell you. Well, Wally, Wally, wait a second here. Who's our president? He's trying Who's to our president right now? We have a B movie actor. Listen. Now, what type of impersonation do you think that guy does? At least Ronald Reagan knows who he is and how old he is. Gary Hart changed his age and his name. He doesn't know who the hell he is. I'd like to respond to that, Wally. Gary Hart changed his name in 1960. His entire family changed his name. And Why? changing a name is nothing to be ashamed about. Why did he change his name? Do you know Gerald Ford's name used to be Leslie Lynch King Jr.? <laughs> Leslie Lynch King Jr. Now this guy went from Gary he adopted Hart Pence a to name Gary Hart. of a parent. It, it was not a made-up name. That name Ford was the name of his adopted parent. And Hart says that his original name wasn't Hart Pence, but that that if you trace this back his family lineage, he can see that it was Hart. No, that is not true. And, and well, why, wait a second. I, why did he not, why did he knock a year off of his age? Why why did he do that? There's been some confusion in this oh, family about there's that. There's a lot of but confusion why, with Gary Hart. <laughs> some of the confusion I want you to speaking of, of confusion okay, let's I want you to explain confusion. this bit of confusion okay Gary Hart your <clears throat> wonderful Prince Charming <laughs> <laughs> Gary Hart made the uh, a ludicrous statement oh, in that in, in that debate when somebody asked him if a Russian jet came flying over this country and and we ordered that jet down and the Russian jet wouldn't come down. Would he shoot the Russian jet down? And you know what your dunce of a candidate said? He said, well, I'd have them peek in the windows, and if they were in uniform, I'd have them shoot the jet down, and if they were in plain clothes, I'd let the plane go by. Oh, oh my God. Wally, How do you explain that? Okay. Gary Hart. Explain. Gary Hart is not my Prince Charming. The man makes mistakes, and I'm not going to explain a mistake. It was a mistake. But any man who's campaigning day in, day out, 12 hours a day is going to so make you mistakes. Admit Ronald Reagan, it was a mistake. I so you admit it. that? that uh, it was a mistake. I all right. It. A man who is running for president cannot afford that kind of a stupid, yeah. idiotic mistake. Yeah, but Wally, 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 wait a second. The man, the man who is president makes mistakes bigger than that one. Tell me a few. In March of 1983, Ronald Reagan went on the air and said, the evil empire threatens us. What was he talking about? And he was the talking Russians are an evil empire. Don't you yeah. believe that? candidate, Gary Hart, is so naive as to think the Russians are not an evil empire, then he certainly does not believe to be president of the United States. It's not naive, Wally. Are you trying to tell me that you do not believe Russia is an evil empire? I do not believe Russia is an evil empire. The you Russians and, are people also. You and also. Gary Hart really deserve each other, you know that? Oh, come on, You Wally. do not. What do you believe Russia is if it's not an evil empire? A peace-loving country? It's another country that we have problems with, but how do you solve problems? 
You don't solve well, problems by I'll backing them you, into the corner. I'll the tell Soviet you, bear no, is crawling over to us, and they're backed in the corner, and they're going to lash out. We I'll have tell to enter you how into to negotiations. Solve the problem, and, and that's can, what no. Gary Hart wants to do, okay? Right. You ask me how to solve the problems, I'll tell you, and, you, and then you tell Gary, and maybe he'll know something. I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm well. I'm well. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Wally George, and this is Hot Seat, and our guest is Patrick Galvin of Students for Heart. Now, you know, speaking of Students for Heart, how do you explain the fact that the Los Angeles Times has uh, has printed an article, and they have made a survey all over the United States of America, and they have concluded that the great majority of the baby boomers, as they call them, the college students of America, are strongly behind Ronald Reagan, and they say that the ages between 18 and 25 are going to vote 90 percent for Ronald Reagan. How do you explain that? Well, Wally, when I go around campuses, I talk to a lot of students who are very excited about Gary Hart's campaign, and I'm one of them. You know, I think there are a lot of students who like, who like Ronald Reagan, and I think there are a lot of like uh, Gary Hart, and I, you know, I don't believe in these surveys 100%, because at the beginning of this presidential race, they said Gary Hart was a nobody, and now he's a big somebody. Now he's a big nobody. <laughs> I want to ask you some positions uh, uh, that Hart has. Okay. What are Gary Hart's positions on, position on the loyalty oath? I don't know that offhand. What and I learn. <laughs> Wally, I, I don't think anyone knows their candidate stands on all the issues, and I think anyone who claims to know that How is misrepresenting the, the facts, and I'm not going to do that. How about the nuclear freeze? How about the nuclear freeze? Hart supports the nuclear freeze 100 percent. Right he doesn't, now, right? He doesn't believe it goes far enough. Because if you implement a nuclear freeze without doing anything else, it serves no purpose. What you do have to enter into after that are strategic arms limitation talks with the Soviets, the stop talks. And there are a number of ideas Hart has for controlling the, nucle the massive nuclear proliferation that this country and the Soviet Union is going through right now. Hart has all kinds of new ideas, and none of them are feasible. I have news for you. Now, let me ask, ask you this. A lot of people who have voted for him disagree with you, Wally. Well, how many people have voted, voted for him? I mean, the, the people who have voted for Gary Hart are people who have been brainwashed by him. He is a liberal radical who's walking around in a suit and tie like you, trying to, <laughs> trying to convince the people of this country that he no longer is a liberal, far left wing liberal radical. Well, Gary Hart may be uh, in a conservative suit with shirt and tie, but we know what he really is, don't we? Yeah. Wally, Wally, Gary Hart is just as American as you are. He's, oh, looking, come on. he's looking for the best interest of this country. He's the only, he's the only presidential candidate. I don't think candidate. Gary, Hart, Gary Hart knows how to spell America, to tell you the truth. Wally, Gary Hart, of all the presidential candidates, has the biggest education out of all of them. Ronald Reagan never went to graduate school. Gary Hart went to Yale Law School. The man knows what he's talking about. Abraham Lincoln taught himself to read. Do you compare him to Abraham Lincoln? I think that's, I think that's a flattering comparison. I think he's a good man. He's, it's a flattering comparison. How, oh I would never compare it. What does Hart stand on, on our position in Central America? Would, would Gary Hart pull all of, our, all of our troops out of Central America and abandon our friends there? Gary Hart believes our policies in Central America are wrong. The other, last week, Richard Nixon was speaking in front of a, a conference of American publishers, and Richard Nixon said, you know, the communists talk about the problems, and too often we just talk about the communists. Okay, well, and what, are, that, what that means is, what that means is America has to go into Central America, and they have to address the root of the problem. And the root of the problem isn't military. The root of the problem is economic. And that's how we're going to solve the problems. You don't solve problems by sending in the Marines you, you all the time. It's a complex world, You are world, absolutely Wally. wrong. The President of the, of the United States can see, and obviously Gary Hart is blindfolded, over the fact that the Soviet Union, aided, of course, by Castro's Cuba, are moving into all of Central America, trying to take over all of Central America. And if we do not give them military aid, they will take over all of Central America and then move on to Mexico and then be knocking on our front door. You know that. Wally. 
I think that's I think that's quite paranoid, and it sounds like one of Ronald quite Reagan's. Paranoid. Well, it sounds like one of Ronald Reagan's movie scripts. I mean, the world is not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? Wait a minute. Ronald Reagan is facing reality. Your man is the man who's trying to hide his head in the sand and forget reality. That's not true, Wally. Let's go to the audience. Come on up. And by the way, before we go to the audience, I resent the fact that your candidate, Gary Hart, has called Ronald Reagan almost a racist. He has said, number one, President Reagan does not care a bit about the poor or the needy or the minorities, and that is a damn lie, and you know it. Don't you think so? Well, he, he may... I don't doubt that Ronald Reagan is a good man. I think he's probably one of the nicest men we've had in the White House. But if he does care about them, I don't think he's going about it the right way. Oh, yes, he's he not is. showing his affection. He is. How come he's cut Social Security? How come he's cut aid to families with dependent children? Cut, How come he's he cut cutting, school lunches? He is, wait a minute. Why? He, he is cutting the fat in these programs, and he wants he's to. He's cutting the people. Oh, well, he is not. That's what he's cutting. What he is doing is he says, and this is true, and you, and you whisper this into Gary Hart's ear. What, what Ronald Reagan has said is he wants to help the truly needy. What you liberals want to do... There are a lot of truly needy starving out there. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. What Ronald Reagan says is he wants to help the truly needy uh, and put them on welfare. There are too many liberal lunatics who are on welfare and are on welfare from cradle to grave, never wanting to go out and get a job and take care of themselves. Ronald Reagan says, just what John F. Kennedy said some years ago, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And your candidate says, the country will take care of you, we'll be big brother, and we don't want that kind of president, do we? No! Well, we, Gary Hart doesn't say that at all. Ronald Reagan, Gary Hart agrees, you have to cut the fat out of government. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. But what Ronald Reagan is doing is he's cutting the muscle out. He's cutting the people out. And that isn't fair. What has happened to Gary Hart, wait a minute. What has happened to Gary Hart is they've cut his brain out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm Vic from San Marino. Yes, Vic. And I want to ask this guy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> pardon my voice. Ronald Reagan has done more in three and a half years to clear up all of Carter's mess that Carter made in four years and a Democratic Congress. Ronald Reagan believes strength through deterrence, okay? If we did not build up our nuclear power and we did not keep Central America free from the Russians, World War III will be coming before you know it. And you gotta believe that. Anything that bad happens down in Central America is provoked by Cuba, which is provoked by the Soviet Union. Now, if you wanna sit back and let Central America go one by one, each country fall, fall, fall. Mexico is going to be next, and we're going to be surrounded by them. How do you answer that? Gary Hart wants to get at the answer root of the him. problem. Gary Hart wants to get at the root of the problem. But he can't, What's obviously. The root, the root of the Soviet problem. Union is the you root. Okay, well, right? how do you deal with that? Sure, well, this is a competitive back off world. With a nuclear freeze, you don't say, okay, guys, we're not going to build up any more weapons, and either are you, right? But of course you don't, not. You don't understand Hart's position. He's not going to cut defense. He's going to build it at 3 to 4% increases in percentage wise a year. Friend. When Soviet Union is building 20%. Reagan's right. right. <laughs> Reagan's approach. Reagan's approach to national defense is ill-conceived. Hart has experience in the national defense area. He's been a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee for nine years. A he knows, he Senate, knows right? what he's talking about. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does, my First friend. First of all, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> supports, Ronald Reagan supports a very strong defense system, which one out of every 10 American jobs, it, it provides one out of every 10, 10 jobs in America, OK? Now, if you, hit the, you let the Soviet Union catch up to us and eventually pass us, they're going to be breathing down our necks. Okay, okay, wait a second. Before this guy starts criticizing Hart too much, why don't you read his book, A New Democracy? I don't want to waste my time. In all fairness, here is a book called A New Democracy by Gary Hart, and I want you to know, seriously, I am going to treasure this book. My name is Mark from Westminster, and uh, I'm a registered uh, Democrat. Mm -hmm. I've made mistakes in my life. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my big thing for this election is we got to elect a man who has leadership. And there is not one man from the Democratic Party who has the leadership that Ronald Reagan has. I, 
I, I disagree with him. I think Hart has the leadership and he's prepared to lead this country. And speaking of that, yes. I think Mr. Hart is doing your own party a tremendous injustice. It's obvious, I think, to everybody that Walter Mondale is going to, to wind up with the nomination. And what is I your... Don't, I don't think that's well, guaranteed. I, that's my opinion. Is it okay. your opinion? Yeah. So what is Gary Hart doing? And I'll tell you, I almost have to thank Gary Hart because what he is doing is arming the, the Republican Party with the most ammunition they could ever have in their lives. All they have to do when they go up against Walter Mondale in November is just read all the quotes of what your candidate has said about Walter Mondale. And he has nailed him and hammered him into the ground. Don't you think that's a little unfair? He is tearing your party apart. How do you answer that? Gary Hart is running for president this year because he believes believes America needs new leadership and he believes he can provide it. And your claim that he's out of the race I don't think is justified. Gary Hart has almost a thousand delegates right now. He's looking forward to doing very well in the June 5th primary and is a real contender and you shouldn't discount By him at this point in the game. By the things he has said and the things <clears throat> he has done uh, to Walter Mondale, what he has done, what he has accomplished is re-electing Ronald Reagan in a landslide. Okay, let's go to the I don't list. think Reagan's going to win. <laughs> My name's Ron. I'm from Upland. And, Pat, I want to ask you, um, what's Gary Hart's policy toward the deficit? Ronald Reagan ran around the country in 1980 promising he would balance the budget by 1984, if not, not 1983. Uh, what is Hart How is Gary going to balance the budget? Is, is he going to cut back on our, our all the military expense or what? Well, one way you have to balance the budget, as unpopular as it may be, Gary Hart is not going to go for this 10 percent tax reduction of 1983. He's going he's, he's gonna to take that away. People will have to be taxed to cut back on the deficit. It's not a popular answer, but it's a step that must be taken to put this country in the right direction. And also, he will cut national defense, here is and by step, quite a bit. Here is the step that Mr. Hart has to take. This is the one step he must take, and you tell him this for me. The one step he has to plan now is running for re-election as Senator from Colorado, because I don't he's never so, going to be the president. <laughs> people on my show before. But now we are really... <laughs> now you may recall, a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, this man, uh, whatever, came up to my podium and raised the roof, screaming and hollering, saying he wanted to debate me. So I'm, I'm going to give him an opportunity to do that. Now, David, would you introduce our guest? Okay, Wally. <laughs> Let, uh, let me introduce a rather unusual appearing character here, uh, political activist Rudy Krause. Now, Rudy, Rudy, uh, I'm glad that you decided to get all dressed up for the show. Yeah. Well, I, I had to take a long distance run before I came on the show. I have a mass amount of energy uh, that I must expend uh, every day. Would you talk to me? <laughs> okay, Wally. Uh, something, uh, something personal, I, I'm sure a lot of the guys watching in who want to be up, uh, up to date in style and so forth are, are going to want to know who styles your hair. Uh, I style my own hair. This is called a super cosmic visor. I'm a fashion designer. Yeah. This... <laughs> yeah, well, right now, fashion designers have their ups and downs. Right now, I'm on GR Fashions for general relief. I've been working on my lawsuits against Los Angeles County since 1982. All my time, words, thoughts, and actions go towards suing Los Angeles County. Now, wait, you have a booklet that you sent here that says, Prevent Police harassment, harassment, Stop the Punk Cops. How dare you call our police punks, huh? Yeah. Why well, in the world? the world are you saying stop the punk cops? The Linwood Sheriff's premeditatedly attempted to murder me in 1983. Oh, come on. How did I they have, do that? I have emeritus... 
I have emeritus contention that resides in Los Angeles Superior Court. I have 10 lawsuits against Los Angeles County. The Linwood Sheriff has falsely imprisoned me in a mental institution claiming that I was insane. That was to cover up. Wait a minute. That was to cover up. Oh, hold on a minute. I don't want to, I don't want to sound rude, but are you sure you weren't insane? I'm... I, I mean, were you sane when they put you in there? I'm totally sane. I'm totally in complete control Wait, of my faculties. Wait, are you faculties. sane now today? As I'm you're totally talk, sane. Look, look me in the eyes and tell me that you're sane. I'm totally sane. There isn't anyone in the United States that's more sane than I am. No, As a matter of fact, wait, I'm wait, wait a minute. You say there's nobody in the United States that's more sane than you? That's correct. Wait, we're in trouble! <laughs> Go ahead. I'm author of Operation Big Brother, Psychological Quality Control in the United States. We're going to be phasing... Go ahead. Operation Big Brother, phase three. The U.S. law enforcement system is not psychological. We have police that smoke, drink, take drugs, overeat, and under-exercise. Evidence... Wait a minute. What's wrong with... Wait a minute. What in the world is wrong with a, with a policeman who overeats and doesn't exercise? What's wrong with that? If someone is overeating and under-exercising, they're in a suicidal food depression. That's an wait, obvious wait indice. Wait, wait, wait a minute. They're in a what? A suicidal? A suicidal food depression. They have Philobosian bellies. <laughs> wait the Los Angeles sheriffs look like Philobosian. And if Philobosian does not criminally prosecute the Linwood sheriffs for their premeditated attempted murder on my life in 1983, I will criminally prosecute Philobosian. Wait a minute, let's explain who Philobosian is. Philobosian is the district attorney for Los Angeles County. And I allege that Sherman Block is incompetent in his role. Who he is, is Sherman Block? Tell him who Sherman Sherman Block is the executive sheriff for Los Angeles. He, hires the, he hired the Linwood sheriffs who smoke, drink, take drugs, overeat, and under-exercise. <laughs> Are you saying that Sherman Block, the sheriff of this county, aided in the Linwood Police Department's attempt on your life? Sherman Block is a contributory factor, and he's been indicted as such. By whom? By Rudy Robert Krause, attorney in pro per. That's you. That's right. You I had indicting? to assume. I had to assume sole power of attorney because the ACLU would not handle my legal actions for me. Ramona Ripson. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, hold on. Boy, that's the first time I thought the, AC, the SU ever had any sense. Very simply, I, I, I normally never watch TV, but one night I saw Ramona Ripson on television. She said that the ACLU was the number one civil rights fighting organization in the United States, and that's not, that's not a fact. The 21st Century Logistic Society, in pro per, is the number one civil rights fighting organization in the United States. We're starting a new society, law education from kindergarten to high school graduation, young power, the beginning of a revolution, to build an intelligent generation. <laughs> You, how do you say, now you have made a serious charge about the Linwood Police Department. How did the Linwood Police Department plot to take your life? Just answer me that. I was, I was, standing, I was talking to some adolescents on Linwood. I was talking that's, about... That's reason not to take your life. <laughs> I love kids. Yeah. I love kids well, the most. Hey, hey, I, hey, I hate minute, drug wait pushers. Wait a minute. What were you doing talking to those kids on the streets of Linwood? They'd ask me to sing the national anti-drug anthem. Doesn't take a super genius to know getting high is getting Wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. strong is so low. Wait a minute. Now I can understand, now I can understand when I try to take this guy's life. Yeah, because the Linwood Sheriffs take drugs. How, they probably wait, push them. Wait a minute. How did, how did the Linwood police try to take your life? How did they do that? Okay, so after I got through singing, I'm in love with the girl at Martin Luther King, the number one song in 1983 in the pop lock soul category. Yeah. <laughs> the alias... <laughs> The alias. Sir, 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 sir. 
Okay. I'm in love with the girl. Right, I'm in love with the king. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Now, how did they... What did they do that made you think they were trying to trying to take your life? Okay, what happened was Officer Burwell, who at that time gave me the alias of Captain Osborne, 915 UVM was his license plate number. He never approached. Mind, never mind that. What did they do to you? Okay, he approached. Then he started yelling at me in a manic rage to get out of there. I'd done absolutely nothing wrong. Then I started jogging backward down the street so I could watch him. I thought he was going to attack these kids. Then he got out of his car like a gunslinger and took a position to shoot me, gun me down in the middle of the street. I started yelling, get his license plate number. He's in a manic rage. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, we're going to... We're going to leave that officer, hold on. We're going to leave that officer in a manic rage. I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay. Uh -huh. Welcome back. I'm Wally George, and we're here with an uh, extremely intelligent gentleman here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Rudy Krauss. By the way, if you'd like to come down here and be in our studio once, we tape on Wednesday nights. Uh, you can call these numbers on your screen, leave your name and your telephone number, area code, please. And how many tickets you want, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You must be 18 years or older. 714 area code, you call 999 5000. 999 213 area code, call 464 6111. 464 or if you want to write to us, write to me, Wally George, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. I'll put you on our Wally George mailing list. Now, as time permits, Rudy, uh, you say that, you, that you, you did spend some time in a mental hospital. Yes. And you say that you were falsely imprisoned there right. by persons who cannot understand high English. Yes. Now, what is high English? That is the ability to create words in a fashion that rhyme intelligently. <laughs> And you were speaking in high English, and they could not understand you, so they... I don't always speak in, a, in, a, in, a, in my automatic response poetic answers. Sometimes I engage in free association conversation. Now, that conversation just ended in I-O-N. I keep my eye on I-O-N. At Super Schools for Super Students, we teach the I-O-N ending, which is the most important ending in the English language. Wait, speaking of ending, we have reached the ending of this program. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, uh, we'll have to have this guy back and talk about uh, other yeah. things. <laughs> Smells like a gym bag. Does anyone else 